Hello and welcome to our True Voices Youth Grants Community Webinar, where we'll be discussing some of the pertinent information for your application, as well as going through the application questions. My name is Sunny, my pronouns are they, them, and I am the Program Coordinator at It Gets Better Canada. I want to let you all know that this event is being recorded so that we can use it as a resource for applicants. Now, in this event, uh, webinar today, we'll be talking about our mission at It Gets Better Canada, just in case you don't know very much about us and want to learn a little bit. We'll be talking about the campaign purpose for the grants, uh, the key dates to keep in mind, the eligibility criteria. We'll also talk about some sample project ideas, the application process, and then end with a Q&A where you are welcome to share any questions that you would like answered. So our mission at It Gets Better Canada is to uplift, empower, and connect 2S LG plus youth across Canada through the power of storytelling and building community. It Gets Better Canada has been a registered national charity since 2016. We do a lot of storytelling on virtual spaces, social media, blogs, our website, YouTube, uh, sharing stories to reach 2S LG plus youth and to empower them and uplift their voices. We also do programming for middle, secondary, and post-secondary institutions, as well as working with youth in virtual spaces and community spaces. Now the campaign today for True Voices, this is very exciting. It's a new campaign this year, and it's a grant-making initiative launched by Gets Better Canada to empower and inspire and encourage 2S LG plus youth uh, post-secondary youth in particular, from coast to coast to coast, to embrace the power of storytelling and to overcome the challenges that they might be facing in their schools and their communities. Uh, we, the goal of the campaign is to fund a storytelling project in each of the 13 provinces and territories, allowing for students across Canada to experience a more welcoming school environment. The 5K grants are funded by It Gets Better Canada with financial support from American Eagle, which we're very grateful for. Now, we're, uh, we have some key dates here for us to look at. Uh, the applications are currently open. Those applications close on April 1st, so we encourage you to apply before April 1st when that portal closes. The applications will be reviewed from April to May uh, and we'll be letting the notify the grantees know of the final decision at the beginning of June. And the announcement of the grantees will happen during Pride uh, at the end of June. And now July to August is when the paper mint and paperwork and disbursement of funds will take place. And then we're very excited to see those projects get started. And we do ask that there will be four reports uh, that the, the uh, project in schools will need to be due just to let us know how it's going, how those funds are being used. So the first uh, status report is due in October. The second status report would be January 2025. And the third status report would be April 2025. And then that final report, which is very important, uh, would be due July 2025. Now, we are a registered charity and have a lot of restriction on how we can grant money to schools and GSAs. So it's important that the organizations that we fund are eligible to receive that funding. Uh, there is five eligible organization types. I'll go over that in the next slide. So it's important that you are one of those five eligible organization types. It's also important that the project is associated with a public school district or secondary school or schools. Um, this is important for our funding and our ability to uh, adhere to CRA restrictions. The project also has to take place between September 2024 and June 2025. The project also needs to be storytelling based and primarily student led. The project has to have a clear benefit for 2S LGPS youth. So we want to know what that project does that's going to support youth in the school, in the community, and the impact of that project can hopefully be measured and evaluated. It's really important for us to see what impact that project has. I also want to keep in mind that it's important that there be no infringement on copyright or use of copyrighted material. So for example, if you were putting on a play, we ask that it be an original play and not a copyrighted material. We also want to note that it's really important when we think about budget that it's an appropriate use of funds. Grants cannot fund research, political activities, scholarships, or individual needs. So grants cannot benefit only one student. It's also important to know that funding can't go towards time or creative time for anyone affiliated with the school, so staff or students. But it, you can offer honorariums to people outside of the school for their expertise. Now, there are five eligible organizations that you can fall into, and you can fall into more than one category, so you can select more than one option here. 
Uh, but the eligible organizations, firstly, are registered charity under the Income Tax Acts, then a registered municipal or public body. Uh, this is important because you, they can issue an official donation receipt and they're eligible to receive gifts from uh, registered charities. Or you could be a nonprofit organization that is incorporated under the Canada Nonprofit Corporation Act or other provincial legislation. You can also be a school authority or an established gender and sexual alliance or similar student club sanctioned by an eligible school authority. Now it's important to note that for both the charity and nonprofit organizations, it does need the project does need to be related to a committed uh, public post-secondary school or school board. You need to apply um, in cooperation with a school authority or a, a school in particular. Uh, that means uh, I do also want to say that you can apply as a group of schools. So if you say have three schools that want to apply together, you can do that, but you do have to have a lead school and contact uh, in the designated parts on the form. Uh, do note that the grants are award up to $5,000 per application, meaning that if schools apply in partnership, uh, that could end up, they could end up receiving fewer dollars having to split that grant. Now, some sample project ideas. You can find uh, some sample project ideas more extensively on our website on the Youth Voices page. Uh, if you click the link for project ideas, um, sample templates. Uh, but some ideas, or you could do something like a live performance, so develop and produce a play or spoken word event that amplify the voices of 2S LGBTQ youth. We want to hear their voices. So if it's a play, ideally, that's something that's been created by the students. Uh, I think it's really important uh, that we we really uplift the voices of the youth in our schools. There's also the digital storytelling aspect that you could go into. So producing a podcast or a web series, you know, hopefully opening up some conversation about issues affecting 2 plus youth or focusing on 2SL plus characters or people. Uh, there's also print projects. So the option to publish a zine or anthology of poetry, short stories or essays by 2SL plus youth. Um, this one, I think, is, is also really important to note that we don't want any copyright infringement. So this has to be a uh, work by uh, to a self youth in your school, in your community. Uh, I also want to say uh, that projects can be multimedia. You could, for example, create a zine in print, but also have it available online. Uh, so really, it's up to you. Let your creativity overtake you and create something that you're really excited about. Now I'm gonna go through the application questions with you. Uh, I wanna first look at what that application is made of. The first part when you get to the submittable form is the eligibility form. So you're going to go through those kinds of things that we talked about before and establish that you are indeed eligible both to receive those funds and for your project is eligible um, and doesn't infringe on copyright or anything like that. Now the bulk of the application is six sections. The sections are contact information, school environment and club information, project vision, additional criteria, project budget, budget and conclusion. Now the conclusion I want to note is a video component. This video is not going to be viewed uh, by any outside one outside of the grant uh, committee, so you do not need to have uh, release forms necessarily. Uh, but we do want this video to be student led. Now you can find this application on Submittable. Submittable is a free service. You will have to create an account, um, but it's a free service that works on um, most browsers. Unfortunately, it does not work on Internet Explorer, just to note. Uh, but once you click apply, uh, once you click apply, your application will be submitted. So make sure to click that apply button because we will not be viewing any saved drafts. So let me just switch over so that we can see the application page, which I have open. <laughs> Wonderful. So once you get to the submittable application page and fill out those eligibility questions, you will be brought here if you are ready to fill out those application questions. And we provide a little bit of information. This is stuff that we've talked about, um, about what the project is about, who we are, uh, when the application is due. And there's also uh, a option to get the guidelines for the opportunity as a PDF. So if you want to view that while you think about the application, when you talk to your students, you can click here to view that PDF. And there's also technical support through Submittable if you're having any issues. 
And here you can see that sections one through three should take about 30 minutes to create, we commit uh, to complete, we estimate, and section four through six should take about two hours. So this will be a substantial amount of time. And one of the great things about Submittable is you can invite collaborators to work on this with you. So you can invite your students to work on this application with you, and that should help out a lot. Uh, and you can also see how the application will be graded here. Now, the first section is contact information. This is important so that we know who you are uh, and how we would be giving you the funds. Uh, so the first thing is your project name. So what is the name of your project? What are we going to call it? Uh, and then we do want a screenshot from your school district or board's rec re website recognizing your school just uh, to make sure that you are an eligible school and so that we have that on file. And here we ask you that lovely eligibility question that I showed earlier. So remember, you can you can always fall into more than one category and, and select more than one option, but it is important that you are one of these uh, eligible organizations. So then we ask you for some information. So your, your name of your eligible organization, name of the school, because remember, it does have to be connected to a particular school. Uh, you have to have a designated school that is leading this project. Uh, so your school name, your school province or territory, city. Uh, we'd love if you could connect your website here. And then here we get into some of the questions for who is leading this project. So is who is the faculty advisor that is going to be on the lead on this? Uh, so your name, your last name, your title, just so that we know how to address you, as well as your email so that we can contact you. And we do also ask that you have a student leader signed in. We want to see that there is a strong student leadership present and that Students are excited and engaged. So hopefully you can find one student leader who is interested in helping you fill out this application. And so their name and last name and email would go here. And then here we just ask for the legal representatives of your eligible organizations. So that would be anyone with signing power. And we move on to our section two, which is environment and club information. This is really important for us to get an idea of what the environment of your school is. So we know the context for your project. So we know, you know, what kind of are the needs that you're speaking to, how will this fit into your school uh, current idea and what's going on there, and also to know whether or not this application or this project would be supported. Um, so remember this first question about GSAs, you will not be uh, penalized if you do not currently have a GSA, or if your school administrative or environment is unsupportive. These are just questions for us to get context. So we ask if you have a GSA, don't worry. If you don't have it, please still apply. Uh, we also ask what some challenges and needs facing your 2S LGBTQ students at your school are. What does your school currently do to address bullying and harassment, particularly of 2S LGBTQ students? This is an important question for us to know, you know, if an incident happens, what are the current processes in place? Uh, what kind of support is already available? And then here we ask, will your grant receive support from administrators at your school? Explain why or why not. Uh, we want to know, are administrators on board? Um, what kind of barriers might you be facing at your school, um, just to give us a more of an idea of the context. Now, the project vision section three, this is an exciting part because this is where you get to start thinking about your project and painting a vision of what the impact of your project might be. So it's really important that we ask, uh, there's two specific things that we kind of want to get to know through these questions. And that's what, like, how are you telling a compelling story? What's that story? How are you gonna tell it? And how does it address the challenges that are faced by 2S LGBTQ youth uh, at your school? And then the second thing is, how is, might it help build community while aligning the central idea of a world where all 2S LGBTQ youth live freely and authentically, equally, and to know their worth, worthiness and power as individuals? So just keep that in mind as you're writing your application, that those are kind of the goals of what we want to see. And the first question is a nice, easy one. What is the mode of storytelling? Are you making a documentary? Are you putting on a play? Are you making a multimedia uh, exhibit at your school? So feel free to provide, provide as much information about the mode of storytelling. If it's a documentary, how are you planning on filming it? If it's a multimedia, what kind of media? Uh, any kind of information about the mode of storytelling that you're taking. And then the second question is provide a project narrative, which might include must include a thorough breakdown of your proposed project. So what's that project going to look like? If you are creating a web series, maybe you know at least generally what kind of plot or themes you might want to show through your project. Um, what kind of uh, goals do you have for your story? What do you want your story to say and tell? So we'd love to hear as much as you can provide about that project narrative. And this next question is specific objectives that are aimed at uplifting 2S youth. 
Uh, how do you hope to achieve this with the project grant? This is a really important question uh, to think about how might you create goals or objectives that are valuable or, or are able to be measured and evaluated. Uh, because we want to be able to uh, show that this project had an impact or at least evaluate, you know, what impact the project might have had. Um, this is a really important thing also to like to get your students involved with because this is we're learning science. We're learning how do we track something? How do we create goals and then, you know, track our ability to reach them? So I'm really excited about this question. You'll see later on we ask a, a question that's follow up to this. But the next piece is providing a realistic timeline that's executable within one year, at least, because the project has to run from September 2024 to June 2025. And this uh, this part, we uh, we give you a template for that timeline. So I'd encourage you to use that um, if you would like. If you have a template that you think provides all the information and really resonates with you, that's great too. But you can download this template uh, that we've provided. Make sure that you download it and submit it as one of the approved document types. Uh, so you can use this template uh, to show us basically break down what needs to get done for this project. What are the different stages and steps and when's that going to happen? And that'll give you, you a really good idea of how you're going to do this project and what the process of it will look like. And also let us know that you, you've thought about that and that, that this project uh, has legs and, is, is, uh, and you're excited to get it started. Now I'm going back to our document. The next question is describe how the project will support the needs of 2S electrical students at your school. Very important. And then describe how the project will be led and created by 2S electrical students in specific roles. So again, we want this to be a student-led project. So we want to make sure that whenever possible, students are having the opportunity to learn and experience and try things and lift their voices. So what are the roles that students will take on? What are the things that students are going to be doing uh, in this project? And then this question, I foreshadowed it before, but how will you evaluate and measure the success of your project? What metrics will you be using to demonstrate the impact of your project had for your organization within your school and for 2S Elkville's youth? So this is when you, you pull out your you know, science or social sciences knowledge. How do we track maybe what kind of impact this had on the students that are participating in the project, the students that are viewing the project, that are um, experiencing the project or the overall community or environment uh, that the project is taking place in. And this last question of this section is what challenges and barriers do you foresee for a successful execution of your project? How will you address the above challenges and barriers? Please explain thoroughly. So this is just thinking about, you know, what might we need to address? What might happen? Uh, and making sure that we're prepared to deal with those things and, and to, you um, address those challenges. Now this section, section four, is additional criteria. It's important to note um, that a lot of the questions in the sections are for bonus points uh, that are asking if the project is serving um, an underserved population. This first question though is how could your project incorporate broader 2S LGBTQ use involvement within your community, if any? So that's like, do you have any partnerships uh, with organizations, with 2S LGBTQ organizations outside your school, with other organizations or clubs within your school. Um, maybe you are getting 2S LGBTQ older adults involved in order to have intergenerational conversations and narratives. Anything like that, please include that there. And then we also ask these questions, which are about uh, whether or not your project serves or takes place in underserved uh, communities, like rural or remote communities. Uh, but not limited to the far northern communities with a population of less than 30,000. This next question is, does the, pro does the project focus on and aim to uplift primarily Francophone youth who identify as 2S LGBTQ+, 2S LGBTQ+? Does the project focus on and aim to uplift primarily Indigenous youth who identify as Two-Spirit and or LGBTQ+. Does your project have 50% or greater indigenous, black, or people of color students population? Or does your school? So does your school have that kind of demographic going on? And next two questions, I want to say these do not impact your score. These are simply questions that we are asking to get an idea um, of what might be possible. So the first question is, will It Gets Better Canada be able to publicly exhibit and present your storytelling project? For example, is it a digital project that we would be able to uh, share on our platforms? Is anything like that that might come to mind? And the last question is, is the project in a format that is transportable? transportable for a presentation at the potential national summit tentatively scheduled in Toronto, June, 2025. 
So we are potentially planning a national summit. This is really exciting. Uh, we're hoping that we can make this happen. But if it does happen, would you be able to bring whatever it is that you've created? If it's a web series, you can bring it on a USB. Um, but it might be harder to bring if, say, for example, it is a, um, a mural at your school uh, that tells some sort of story or something like that that you were not able to transport. So that's where you'd answer this question. Unsure, also a great answer. Now, the section five of six is the project budget. This is important because we need to know how are you planning on spending the money? Um, it's really important that we lay out an idea of where those funds are going. Again, we provide a template here so you can click that link and view this lovely project template uh, budget. So I encourage you to download this and then submit it in a appropriate file type. Um, this uh, budget uh, hopefully will help you to break down what expenses that you might need. So think about what are all the different things that we might need to spend money on. You can start doing research into the costs of that, maybe quotes from services that you may want to use and include all of that in the budget. Uh, try and make it detailed. It doesn't need to be super, super detailed, but we want to get a really good idea of how you're planning to spend the money. And then this question here, uh, how much are you requesting from the grant? So what is the total of your budget? We do encourage you to apply for the full 5,000 grant amount whenever possible. And the last question is clearly, or not the last question. This question is clearly demonstrate how the funding will effectively support Twist Electro's Youth and describe your expected outcomes. So connect that budget, that, that funding that you're asking for those particular things to the support of Twist Electro's Youth uh, and what your hoped outcomes are. And then the last question of the sections is, if you receive this grant, what is the process for receiving and spending the funds? We ask this because some schools require that funds go to a specific kind of bank account or that the funds must go to a nonprofit fiscal sponsor um, or anything like that. So anything about that we might need to know about how you can receive or spend the funds. Now, the conclusion, which is my favorite part, is a video that we're asking you and your students to put together. It is a less than three minute video. We really want to see students involved in this. We love seeing educators, but it's really great if we can see students who are excited about this project, who are engaged about it. So we want to let those students and student leaders really shine. Um, so this video, again, will remain private and restricted to by only those uh, within It Gets Better Canada uh, that are in the grant selection process. Uh, so this will remain confidential, confidential students. Um, so if students are worried about uh, appearing in the video, you can provide them this information. They can decide whether or not they're comfortable with that, but these will uh, be uh, private videos. And lastly, this is so important, but make sure that you click apply once your application is complete because we will not be reviewing any applications under save draft. So once you're good, once you have all of those questions answer, please click apply and then go have a little celebration. You did a lot of work, we're very proud of you. And that is the application process. Uh, and I am now going to open it up if anybody has any uh, questions for our Q&A uh, section now. Again, you can submit your questions anonymously through the Q&A, but I don't think I see any questions at this time, which is wonderful. If any questions do come up after this event, you can reach me at programs at itgetsbettercanada.org. That's programs at itgetsbettercanada.org. You can also find out more and apply at itgetsbettercanada.org slash truevoices. And again, stay connected with us. We'd love for you to follow our social media, uh, engage with our content. We've got a lot of really great campaigns and programs going on. So thank you so much for taking the time today to join our webinar and learn a little bit more about the True Voices Grant Initiative. We are so excited to see all of your applications.